we are going to learn about the chapter fundamental unit of life in the nature there are many living organisms which range from unicellular to multicellular unicellular means an organism which is made up of only one cell multicellular organism means an organism which is made up of many cells together the minimum needed structural organization for an independent living organism is one cell means no organism can be considered as true independent living organism if its structural organization is not made up of at least one cell so cell is called the fundamental unit of life why cell is called fundamental unit of life because there is no true living organism which is not having at least the minimum basic structural organization of a cell okay. now how the structural details and functional details of the cell have been understood by the scientific community it all started with various discoveries inventions like many things we all know that magnifying lenses will make a smaller sized object to be watched or viewed by the persons in a large size so use of magnifying lenses has made has made the revolutionary developments in the understanding of cell biology how to date various discoveries in the year 1665 that is after the mid of 17th century robert hooke he had discovered the cell for the first time robert hooke has discovered the cell for the first time where he has discovered the cell in a cork slice cork slice cork slice cork is a dead tissue so the first cell that was discovered by robert hooke in the year 1665 was a dead cell robert hooke has discovered this first cell by using his self designed basic microscope by using the magnifying lenses he has made a microscope on his own that was self designed but that microscope was not so effective it is a basic one okay so this is a self designed basic microscope and the cell that is discovered by robert hooke was the dead cell in the latin language the word cell means little room why he just gave the term cell only because in the latin language the word cell means little room in the cork slice we have seen many small little room like structures many small little rooms like structure so he immediately gave the word cell to that small little room like structure later in the year 1674 and then won lee wooden pot in the other scientists who discovered the living cells from pond water in the year 1674 and then won lee wooden pot you can remember as simply lee wooden pot okay he 
he discovered the living cell from pond water using little improvised microscope. It is improvised microscope. Again, that microscope also has been made by Lee Guggenheim. Next. Next, later, in the year 1831, 1831, Robert Brown, Robert Brown discovered nucleus. Robert Brown discovered nucleus. What is nucleus? Nucleus is the central functional region of the cell which is covered by a double layered membrane. Later we will learn about this nucleus in detail. Okay. And not only he has discovered the nucleus, he even coined the term nucleus. The term biological nucleus was coined by Robert Brown. Why am I using the word biological nucleus? Because in chemistry also we come across a word called nucleus. It is not that nucleus, it is the biological nucleus. It is the central functional region of the cell which is covered by a double layered membrane. Next, in 1839, another scientist called Parkinje, Parkinje, he has coined the term protoplasm. He has coined the term protoplasm. What does it mean by protoplasm? Protoplasm is the fluid-like structure present inside the cell. Protoplasm is the fluid-like structure present inside the cell. Okay. And that protoplasm term was given to the fluid-like structure inside the cell by Parkinje in the year 1839. Next, 1838 and 1839. Almost in the same period. Okay. Two scientists, namely Matthias Sleiden and Theodor Schwann. Matthias Sleiden and Theodor Schwann. I did not write the full names, it's not necessary. Sleiden and Schwann, you remember that is enough. Okay. In the year 1838 and 1839, Matthias Sleiden and Theodor Schwann, they have formulated cell theory. They have formulated cell theory independently. Sladen has formulated the cell theory for plants and Schwann has formulated the cell theory for animals. But surprisingly both have given the same proponents from their cell theory. What are their proponents? If you take Sladen's cell theory, Sladen has proposed that the bodies of all plants are made up of cells. Thus, cell is the base field of life. And Strand has proposed that the bodies of all animals are made up of cells. And cell is the base field of life. So, both have combined their plant and animal cell theories and gave a common cell theory. And the proponents of cell theory are plants and animals are made up of cells. The bodies of plants and animals are made up of cells. And cell is the basic unit of life. Cell is the basic unit of life. Okay. And after they have given these two proponents, there was another scientist called Bicho. There was another scientist called Bicho. In the year 1855, Bicho has added another proponent to the cell theory. Bicho has added another proponent to the cell theory. That is, all cells arise from their pre-existing cells. All cells arise from their pre-existing cells. In Latin, it is also called omnis cellula e cellula. In Latin, omnis cellula e cellula. It refers that all cells are 
still it is considered as the third proponent of the cell theory. What are the three proponents then? The bodies of plants and animals are made up of cells. Cell is the basic unit of life and all cells arise from the pre-existing cells. Omnis cellula, e cellula. Above all, above all, there was a great invention that has taken place. There was a great invention that has taken place in the year 1940. That is electron microscope. Of course, before that it's a normal compound microscope, detection microscope, like various other types of microscopes are also invented. But electron microscope is the greatest invention. Why? Because we all know that the fundamental unit of life is cell. But the ultra-structural details of this cell are not understood until the electron microscope was invented. Who invented the electron microscope? Nall and Raska. Nall and Raska in the year 1940, they invented the electron microscope with which complex structural details of the cell. Complex structural details or ultra structural details of the cell can be easily understood. So this is the introduction of the fundamental unit of life. So what all we have learned? Let us recap once again. The organisms in the nature range from unicellular to multicellular. The minimum needed structural organization for an independent living organism is a cell. So, cell is called the fundamental unit of life. Various discoveries which have led to the development of the study of the cell where in the year 1665, Robert Hooke discovered the first cell from a cork slice. Cork is a dead tissue, so Robert Hooke has discovered the dead cell. But it is the first discovery in the cell biology. Next, later, in the year 1674, Lee Wuvenhoff discovered the living cell from pond water. So, who discovered the cell for the first time? Robert Hooke. Who discovered the living cell for the first time? Lee Wuvenhoff. And uh, in Latin language, what is the meaning of cell? Cell is little room. In the year 1831, Robert Brown discovered nucleus and also coined, coined means gave the name nucleus. In the year 1839, Perkinje gave the term protoplasm to the fluid inside the cell. He gave the term protoplasm to the fluid inside the cell. In the year 1838 and 1839, Schleiden and Schwann, they have proposed the cell theory. The proponents of cell theory are plants and animals are made up of cells. The bodies of plants and animals are made up of cells and cell is the basic unit of life. It is the basic unit of life. And in the year 1855, another scientist called Vichu has added the third proponent to the cell theory. That is, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. That is, in Latin language, it is told as omnicellular, e-cellular. Latin language omnicellular, e-cellular means all cells arise from pre-existing cells. In the year 1940, Knoll and Raska, they invented electron microscope. They invented electron microscope. What is the use of electron microscope? The complex structural details of the cell can be easily understood using the electron microscope. This is the introduction of the chapter fundamental unit of life. In the next topic, we will understand what are various types of cells, why various cells are in different different shapes and different different sizes.
what is the basic organization of the cell and uh, in details uh, each and every component of the structural organization of the cell can be understood. Thank you.